Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we've got a closer look at that collector's edition for Hogwarts Legacy. It has a pretty neat add-on. And the absolute terrible DRM for PC games looks like it's coming to the Switch. We've got those topics and more to cover, but before we get started, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so we can keep you up to date with gaming news. And don't forget, we've got about seven days left to enter for a chance to win that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Special Edition contents. And you can find a link to that in the description. Now let's get started. First, we got a look at the Collector's Edition and Deluxe Editions for Hogwarts Legacy. Now some of this leaked out about a month ago, but we have an actual video now describing what's in the contents. But first, the Deluxe Edition will be $29.99 on both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series systems. And in this you'll receive Dark Arts Garrison Hat, as well as a physical life-size floating ancient magic wand with a book base. And we'll look at that in just a second. You also get a still case and in-game robe. Now this life-size floating ancient magic wand book looks pretty cool. You basically have the base here and I guess they're using magnets here to sort of make the wand float over the book. Now if you're a huge Harry Potter fan, this may be worth the $300 for this deluxe edition, but to me it still seems kind of pricey. Now Hogwarts Legacy will launch on February 10th for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, and the Nintendo Switch version is supposed to come out sometime later. And you can pre-order the game right now, but it looks like to get this deluxe edition, that'll go on sale today, and it's supposed to go up at 1 p.m. Eastern. So you'll want to keep an eye on different retailers, and I would suggest following Wario64 on Twitter, as he'll probably tweet that out as soon as it goes up. And then in some news that nobody wants, we have a headline here from Erdetto. De Novo by Erdetto launches the industry's first Nintendo Switch emulator protection. Now it looks like they're marketing this towards the software makers and this is supposed to block unauthorized emulation of Switch games on a PC and yet allow legit copies of the game to be played on the Switch without issue. But we'll, we'll cover the issues that De Novo's had here in a minute. But let's take a look at a snip here from their press release. By preventing piracy on Switch while blocking unauthorized emulations on PC, studios are able to increase their revenue during the game's launch window, which is the most important period in regard to monetization. The Nintendo Switch emulator protection will ensure that anyone wishing to play the game has to buy a legitimate copy. As with all other de novo solutions, the technology integrates seamlessly into the build tool chain with no impact on the gaming experience. It then allows the insertion of checks into the code which blocks gameplay on emulators. I guess I'm not alone when I press X to doubt when it says that it doesn't interfere with gameplay. Anybody who does any PC gaming will know that de novo has had nothing but issues Let's take a look here from the Wikipedia site for DeNovo. Yes, I know Wikipedia is not an authorized source, but they do link to a lot of authorized source here, so this is just a good place to look to get all of that. Let's look here under the criticism. DeNovo has been criticized for high CPU usage and excessive writing operations on storage components, the latter causing significant lifespan reductions for solid state drives. DeNovo Software Solutions has denied both claims. In the case of Tekken 7 and Sonic Mania Plus, DeNovo caused significant decrease in performance in several parts of the game. Sam Makovich of Ars Technica reviewed in depth how DeNovo was causing performance penalties, releasing an article on the matter in December 2018. In December 2018, Joel Herska of Extreme Tech compared the performance of multiple games with DeNovo enabled and disabled, 
and found that the games tested had significantly higher frame rates and lower load times when de novo was not used. So as you can see from here, all this DRM stuff does do is really hurt the legitimate consumers. So if, say, some developer does integrate this into a game, it's probably just going to be a matter of days or weeks before it's completely stripped out in the piracy scene. So we will have to wait and see if this gets implemented into any game. And I think if anybody's interested in playing it on an emulator, are going to be just fine waiting a few days or weeks until it just gets ripped out and is available without the DRM. And that's all we have for today's video. Did anything we cover catch your attention? Are you interested in this deluxe version of Hogwarts Legacy, or do you think it's probably overpriced? And considering how much the Switch is struggling currently to be able to get the best performance on newer games, how do you think implementing de novo in there will affect their performance? Drop a comment about those topics or anything else we covered today. I want to thank you for watching, and be good.